Hi everyone and welcome to The Mailbox. This is where I go through some viewer responses, could be comments on Twitter or Patreon or mostly YouTube um, or anywhere like that. Uh, and I go over them in a way that, you know, because these comments are interesting or because I don't feel I can give a full enough response by just typing comments back as well. A couple of things as well. There's sort of going to be two mailboxes this week. I do this every week and, the, and this one is the normal one where I'm going to be going over uh, general comments that have arisen from the past week. But uh, can't have failed people's notice that I've done a few law-based videos recently, like speculation really is what I would call it. And um, there have been some specific comments on there that I definitely want to go into detail. Uh, people sort of pointing out, oh, I think you'll find you're wrong about that. And oh, I think you'll find you're wrong about that. And a less polite version, it's like, so what I'm going to do is a separate one on that one where I'm going to be uh, explaining from this little tome and indeed uh, this slightly larger tome, um, how indeed I'm not wrong at all. Uh, but of course, you can feel free to argue me after that one. But that's a separate one rather than lump it in with this one. Now, there may be some responses from those law videos in here as well, but they're not ones where I sort of feel I have to sort of go to the official tomes. So on to the first one. This is from Twitter. Uh, and what this comment relates to is the fact that, you know, I, we, we, I was talking about the fact that, you know, I am 100% convinced there is another raid after um, and Taurus, I think Ian Hazacostas has all but confirmed it by saying, some people have well have been sort of saying, oh no, he didn't say it at all. He said, oh, to be determined. He didn't say to be determined. If someone wants to link me a, an interview where he said that, then by all means. But that's not the case. I watched uh, an interview where he talked about this, at least. I'm not saying there weren't other interviews carried out where, that I didn't watch. But he certainly didn't say that. And also it wouldn't make any sense for that. In past expansions, it might have made sense to say that, but not this one. They've kept a very, very tight ship on Legion. It's in many ways been very impressive. Remember, this idea that patches have been coming out every 11 weeks exactly is no accident. It's not a, a random pattern, the fact that it is continuing. And th this latest patch, I thought, would come out earlier than the 11 weeks thing, but it didn't. And, and, and that is symptomatic, I feel, of a design team that has a definite plan in mind. They're not chopping stuff out. They're not randomly coming up with stuff, although they are developing it over time. They are saying, right, we've got this content coming out at this date and that's what's gonna happen. So this idea of to be determined, no. But anyway, so this person was sort of, um, also talk about Antorus. I think what they were actually sort of saying was that they believe in the fact there's gonna be an extra secret boss. Um, I, yeah, there's a video in itself to explain why I don't think that's the case as well. And they were saying it's because the last boss doesn't have any trinkets or relics drop off it. So what it does have trinkets and relics drop it off, but only just added onto the loot table. And this person sort of said, don't you think it's funny the moment I told you no trinkets or relics means Argus is not the final boss. Blizzard uh, added trinkets to him. No, uh, I don't think that's strange at all. The loot table is the last thing to be changed. The The loot table changed very late on for Tomb of Sargeras, for example. Uh, in fact, I remember in, in the Paladin Discord talking about, you know, with tier and stuff like that. Um, because originally, the tier chest didn't drop from Maiden of Vigilance. Uh, in fact, I think it actually dropped from Kill Jaden. And, um, and then it was moved. And a good reason, I thought, as well. I don't like it when tier drops off the last boss. Unless it's one of those general tier tokens, but that doesn't really fit the design anymore. So, um, no, it didn't surprise me at all. And there could still be changes with the loot table as well. It's sort of, there will be changes very, very close up to release. Remember, the release is not expected for, I would say, a bit under two months now. So there's plenty of time to change things. So the next one, uh, this is related to the data mined map of the new Silithus, uh, as is going to be. And someone here saying, I'm almost certain this is related to a pre-expansion event and not something that happens after you complete the raid. At first, when I read this, like my brain was going, oh, the pre-expansion event will be after the raid. What they mean is not immediately after the raid, of course. Um, if they did that, then it would create a whole load of problems with some players. Still being able to go there, well, you can't. It would effectively require phasing the entire zone of Silithus which seems like a really non-elegant thing to do. 
Um, I think what they're going to be doing with Silithus with the reform of it, I don't think they're just going to remake Silithus. I think what they're going to do is have two different versions of it, like the Blasted Lands now. So in the Blasted Lands, there are two different versions of that. There's close to the original version, and then there's the version with the Iron Horde there. And the way you switch between them is by talking to a bronze dragon at the border. I think it's going to work in the same way. I don't think they're just going to make the current Silithus just disappear completely. Um, that being said, it could be that it just appears solely for a pre-expansion event. But if it did, then I would query why it's in 7.3 files. I mean, it's come out as a, as a, a patch on the PTR called 7.3.2. So that's a 7.3 thing. Why not a 7.4 thing or an 8.0 thing? Um, and also, as I say, the, reason, the thing that causes it is strongly reputed, if not known. I'm going to say if not known because I can't be 100% certain on it um, to be something that would make sense for it to appear as a result of the Antorus raid. But, you know, time will tell. Um, next one, I still want to know what happened to Adal, who is the Naru, of course, who runs things in Burning Crusade and who is still to be found law-wise, as far as we know, in Shattereth City on Outland. Um, it says, I'd have thought they would be present during this conflict. Now, so with, I, with a bit of a caveat. I also want to know Adal's thoughts on Zira. They clearly weren't allied given Adal wanted Illidan dead in spite of Zira's plans for him. Now, what I think this is, you're sort of right there. Well, you are right. Um, I think this is. I think there's a specific reason why Adal is not involved, and that's because it would require even more retconning. They've already retconned aspects of Illidan's motivations, which I didn't think even needed to be done. But... Um, they would, they would also have to do it with Adal. As you say, I mean, all of this very... Because people are still, I think, clutching to this idea. And, and I can't say you're definitely wrong, by the way. That Zira is acting... Because up to now, we would describe Zira's actions as very unnaru like But that's only in terms of, you know, we're surprised at that. But I think it is the way the Naru are. I think they're deliberately redoing the story in terms of our relationship between... Uh, the Naru and ourselves. So, but, but it, you know, it is one of those things because everything weird that has happened with the Naru, with the Argus storyline, has been Zira and not other... Other Narus haven't really been implicated, have they? Um, but I think the reason Adal has not been involved is because it does create another little... It exposes another little change in the storyline that either would have to be retconned and, you know, that's hassle when they do that or come up with some convoluted logic for it. Uh, next comment says, agree with your videos beside one key point. The fact that there are no new things, the problem is that our human imagination is limited. It's inevitable that some storylines and ideas will repeat. Uh, what matters how you do it and what you do with those ideas, I would say. Uh, I think it's true and I think probably scholars of fiction uh, have probably said as much that you could probably break down stories into different types. I, I can agree with that. But my issue with... This is to do with my, my criticism of World of Warcraft storylines in the past. World of Warcraft storylines, bear in mind, not Warcraft storylines. I'm very happy with Warcraft 1, 2 and 3 storylines. It's always been the World of Warcraft ones that I've just thought haven't really... There's not been very much new in it outside of MOP. Um... But yeah, so what I would argue here is, although you can break down stories into types, tropes, if you like, in World of Warcraft they do exactly the same story. Uh, it's the same characters even. That's my issue with it. It's all the same characters, it's all the same basic stories. Not just story types. It's the actual same story again being repeated. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, my, that's my issue with it. It has always annoyed me the World of Warcraft has a, f which is the most popular walk of the Warcraft games as well, as well as the longest running. Why is it that World of Warcraft has to be just there to 
embellish the stories that were in Warcraft 1, 2, 3. Why can't it do its own? Warcraft 3 didn't just embellish the stories from Warcraft 2. It did its completely new ones. The whole Arthur's storyline was completely new. The Illidan thing was completely new. It was all completely new stories that we keep having to drag back. I mean, there's even people talking about, oh, what's happening with... We were talking on the stream yesterday, what's happening with the new Lich King, as if people think, and it might be the case, that there's going to be a new storyline with him. Why do we keep having to drag up and resurrect these old things that we've buried... Um, that has always been my issue, which is why I'm quite happy with the audio drama that's come out, because it sounds to me like Blizzard wants to do something new. At last, after 13 years of this game being out, they actually want to do something new. Uh, next one, it's uh, this is to do with, yeah, this is going way back to the story, where, I say way back, I can't remember how long ago, but certainly longer ago than a week ago, um, where I was, again, with what we know now, trying to or think about deciphering Ilganoth's messages and one of them was about you know the third death and it was about Sylvanas and I was sort of suggesting that maybe because we sort of think at the moment already uh that that Sylvanas you know in, in terms of but but this one was basically saying you know because I was actually arguing at the time that maybe we don't count her death at the hands of Arthur as a death but I had some different logic for it. Someone here has, has basically said, uh, but Sylvanas did not die when Arthas resurrected her. She was still talking as he raised her as a banshee. Um, yes, she was. Uh, in fact, in the actual Warcraft 3 thing, when Arthas strikes her down, she is still talking. And specifically, she's telling Arthas to kill her quickly. And Arthas says, no, you've caused me a lot of trouble. I'm not going to kill you quickly and then turns her into a banshee. So, yes, it could well be argued that he wasn't raising Sylvanas' dead form into a banshee, but her living form uh, using uh, Frostmourne. At which point, I think you're right, and I think we can probably definitely say, but for a completely different reason that I had completely forgotten about, that actually, at that point, she did not die. So, um, hmm, yes. So, it, 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 but it, that to me still, yeah, reads Sylvanas. Next one. What worries me about the next expansion is where do we go from here? We, as in our characters, are as strong as we'll ever be because of the power of our artifact weapons. How do we become strong enough to face any other major threats after this? Um, I think this is always just something where we will. I mean, I remember in Wrath of the Lich King, in the beta, being very, very worried. I was hugely worried that everything was getting too epic then. Um, and it's got way more epic since, and yet it still kept rumbling on. Because the storyline up until Wrath of the Lich King was that although we as you know players sort of knew about Titans... The game characters didn't. Titans were mythological, really. Um, and, and then you had dungeons like uh, Alderman, which was sort of letting you, the character, and a few select people, like historians, know that oh, Titans probably did exist because you were going there, you were looking at Titan constructs, you were also seeing Earth and things like that. And then you had the discs, I've forgotten the name of them now, but they sort of lead you towards Alden. But at the time, Alden wasn't a zone. It was just, so it sort of stops dead. It was one of those quests that I was talking about yesterday in the stream that just stops dead. Uh, that again was alluding to the fact that Titans were actually a thing. But then, you know, in Wrath of the Lich King, we're wandering around Northrend and we're seeing huge, really obvious Titan constructions, as well as walking Titan constructs that are absolutely giant in proportion and it was almost like there's no doubt about it now anymore we, you know wrath of the lich king the, the 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 world of warcraft itself not just us as players but the actual you know everyone was in no doubt at all that titans were a thing and from that point they were no longer this mythological thing they were actual things and and everything did get hugely uh, epic you know we were taking out um, at the time what was considered hugely powerful beyond our comprehension maligos who was uh, one of the the primes of the dragonflight you know a dragonflight leader an aspect and um 
And also, again, attacking an old god, although we'd sort of done that before as well. And so, yes, it was all getting hugely, hugely epic. And then in Cataclysm, another dragon aspect, a much more powerful one this time. Uh, and it's, But it's gone on from there. And now what we're doing in the events on Argus is way off the dial, even by the standards of Wrath of the Lich King. So, you know, it will be, it will be the case that, that we will be powerful enough to deal with whatever it is. And we're presumably not going to fall back to simply beating up Defias Bandits. Uh, things will, I'm sure, in five years' time, I'll still be saying that it's got more epic still. Uh, I have I have little doubt about that. Not that I think that the designers, when they're developing the storylines, are trying to make it more epic each, each expansion. In fact, if anything, if I were them, I'd be wanting to try and keep it on an even keel. Uh, but over time, that just doesn't seem to happen, does it? Um, next one says, we might be fighting all of the old gods' next expansion, not just Nzoth. This is possible. Uh, absolutely possible. And, of course, the fact that you've got, um, you know, this scar appearing in Silithus just outside, the, and I'll remind you, just outside the gates of Anchorage specifically, is a bit of a suggestion that Cthulhu, uh, you know, in some way is going to be involved. But it, I was suggesting that maybe he's just involved in the pre-expansion patch. The reason why I don't think they will try and actively involve all of the remaining old gods, they may reference them in some small way in the next expansion. But the reason why I don't think they will actively have us attack, you know, fight all of them is because it's like, where do you go from there? With the Legion, you can understand how maybe the storyline designers have decided that the Legion was a bit too limited. Apart from the fact we've now fought them several times. But also, ultimately, when you're talking about the Legion and you're trying to ramp it up, all you can really do is fight either Archimonde or kill Jaden. And we've now done those twice. And we're now told that they've completely finally dead. And then after that, who else is there? Because this is what I was wondering. With At the time when I sort of didn't think we'd be completely defeating the Legion, um, which is not a spoiler, by the way, because Blizzard have kept saying so loudly as well. It's like not even supposed to be a secret. Uh, they, In fact, the way they talk about it in interviews and stuff, it's like it was never supposed to be a secret. It was always one of these things that they were quite clear about and expected us to be clear about. And maybe some of you weren't. And it was just me that was being difficult. Um but yeah, even when I was sort of thinking, well, no, we can't really be defeating the Legion. That doesn't make sense. Um, because where do you go from there? You can only go for the Void. Well, it sounds like that's what they want to do. And you want enough variety there. You don't want to keep coming back to the same body, do you? Now, if they have us fight all of the Old Gods, then inevitably what comes after it, whenever... And it's not necessarily that the following expansion has to be Old Gods related, but, but when eventually it is Old Gods related again, which it has to be, you know, it is, again, being samey, you're resurrecting things again. I think it's far better, first of all, by focusing on Unzoth, that's something that is not really featured, other than in whispers, literally, in World of Warcraft before. So it's it's very new. It could be tied in with Queen Ashara, but more about that on a, on a later comment. And uh, so you can have some very, very new stuff. And you can still have more new stuff later on as well in another expansion. So it is possible we will be fighting on multiple fronts against the old gods in the next expansion. But I think it would be better and also more likely for us to be focusing mostly on Unzoth. Uh, next comment. I like this comment. Um, so Sargeras comes back in like eight years when they need to break glass to bring back old subs. Yes, <laughs> this is one of those things, isn't it? Anyone can be brought back. In fact, even killing people in this game, killing villains doesn't stop them coming back, does it? You know, is there a, is, people, so people were asking recently, it's, I think it's a common question is, has anyone ever actually died of old age in World of Warcraft? Because all the protagonists just meet sticky ends, don't they? Um, but even when they do, that doesn't seem to be a deal breaker on bringing them back. You know, is there a single person that has even been killed that we can't think of bringing back? Not really, is there? Uh, they, they... You know, there isn't any character in the game that's been killed by us that they don't feel like they can bring back. You know, they've already resurrected 
uh, Nefarian and Anixia, when we chopped their heads off and, and hung them from Stormwind or stuck them on a pike in Ogrima, you know, when you... you Kelfast killed him and he was back in the same expansion in a dungeon. Looking a little bit grey, a bit worse for wear. Pretty sure, though, he was dead and on the floor. Not breathing, not, not muttering, anything like that. Dead while we all rummaged through his robes trying to find uh, the vial of the Well of Eternity. You know. So, yes, they can absolutely bring anyone back that we, especially when it's someone that we're not even going to be killing. Um, just defeating. Yeah. Uh, next comment. There's a couple of comments within this one. This was, again, the first part is about the video I did based on someone's Reddit post where they were going, hmm, maybe the last raid, which is like a medium raid, not a big raid, we know that, uh, would be Neltharion's Vault or something around Neltharion's Lair. Um, and, you know, I was looking at... The Paladin Order Hall map seems to look at... You look at it and you go, yeah, actually. But then you look at other Order Hall maps. I didn't look at all of them. Someone did actually post me a screenshot of the Mage Order Hall, sort of suggesting that that's basically the same. Um, I mean, it, it is very possible that the Paladin Order Hall and the Mage Order Hall were done at round about the same time, and that's why their maps look very similar. And it's possible that other Order Halls were done at different times, and that's where their maps look very dissimilar. But um, certainly, yeah, it's not back to another one. So it says, the possible future map in True Shot Lodge isn't nearly as accurate as the one you have. No, I know. I have a Hunter myself. Uh, I didn't screenshot, because I did look at more order hall maps than just the ones I did in that video. And the Hunter True Shot Lodge one was one of them. I didn't screenshot that specifically because, well, there were two reasons why I didn't. Um, first of all, there were just so many people in front of it, I couldn't actually get a clear screenshot. But the second one was that it didn't show anything that, that was worth talking about, really, uh, indeed. And then it says... Um, about the thousand years of war YouTube video for today, your thoughts, well, my thoughts are now out on it. But I will have to sort of say my interests in stories like that are about the events and, and how it changes our understanding of the world, the universe of the world of Warcraft, not the characters. Even though those characters are interested in Turalyon, particularly for me as Paladin, um, I'm less interested in what happens to Turalyon and Illyria in it. I'm much more interested in the events that are described. Uh, in terms of where it places us, in terms of current and future storylines. Um, so those are largely my thoughts. And as I say, I did talk about that in that video yesterday. So next, so coming back now to Queen Ashara, it says, something that bugged me is Queen Ashara appearing as sooner. The last raid could be connected to her since it feels unfinished and she does connect to the old gods, which would make sense if the next expansion is about that. Well, it would therefore make more sense for Queen Ashara to come next expansion. Although I have no objections, and in fact, sometimes it's quite good, to have a final raid that leads into the following expansion, it's better for expansions, in my view, to be enclosed and for pre-expansion events to lead into the next expansion. And, uh, you know, and because she has that link to the Old Gods, it would be better if she was involved in the next expansion. It would be good as well because Queen Ashara has not played any significant role in the World of Warcraft stories. So again, she's a perfect boss or villain, or whatever you want to call it, to bring in to World of Warcraft, because first of all, she has that link to the original Warcraft RTS games, which people, you know, still expect World of Warcraft to be about. But at the same time, we haven't really... The only time she's featured in World of Warcraft is during one of the um, uh, Caverns of Time dungeons, you know, with Illidan, where we... Uh, went back to the War of the Ancients, and, and again, then she was just standing there telling people to attack us, not really doing anything. Um, but the reason for her being an assume, I don't think it's confusing at all. I think it's just a tease. You know, I, I Blizzard know that people are desperate for Queen Ashara to feature in some way. Again, for those two reasons I've already said. One is she's a link back to the original games, and two, she is... Um, not been featured really in any significant way in World of Warcraft. So I think they just dropped her in as a bit of a tease. As simple as that. They're quite capable of doing these sort of things. You know, it's like, oh, let's get them excited. Let's just drop Queen Ashar in there. Oh, look at them get all excited. There we go. Uh, and that could be the end of it. It would be good if she was in the next expansion there. But, you know, she might not be. 
they might they might drop another little hint of the next expansion. Maybe there'll be a dungeon where another image of her appears. And then that's it. Done. We'll just get them excited again. We'll keep getting them excited. Then we'll bring out an expansion at some point where it's all about Shara. You know? Uh, but yeah, it makes more sense to do that, I think, than to just suddenly bring her into a Legion-based expansion. Because even though, you know, after Antorus will have basically beaten them, there's still the expansion is still not over. There's still content to bring out. And it should still be sort of related to that, I feel. Uh, next one, it says, TOV, Trials of Valor, didn't really finish the story in Stormheim. All it did was have us kill Helia, which, to be honest, didn't even want to do as she's not that. I think that did finish the storyline. Because uh, what, after all, is the storyline of Trial of Valor? It, the whole storyline, from to me anyway, I mean, you know, you put comments below if you see the storyline as anything different. It is about Odin being trapped in the halls of Valor because of Helia. By killing her, we resolve that story. Odin is free to wander Azeroth again. Uh, that's the storyline. That, that, uh, I see nothing else in any of the major quest lines in Stormheim, and I've done them as both Horde and Alliance now, I see nothing that isn't that. You know, it's all about, we're being taken through those trials by basically an avatar of Odin, you know, this, this creature who's basically Odin, uh, in disguise, so to speak, as far as he can be, and, uh, you know, leading us to, because he's trying to create, he's trying to, you know, get champions to take on Helia, and then the Trial of Valor is it's like, well, fa he's found us now. He's dead happy with us. We've even fought against him and he's impressed us. One final test. You've got to fight me again. And then I'm going to send you off to hell, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, for me, does conclude the story. Um, next one. Right, this is to do with, again, referring back to the possibility of something around Neltharion's vault being uh, a bit of a you know, four-ish, give or take one boss raid. Um, it says, been saying all expansion that is as fishy as heck the way Ebonhorn decides to disappear, saying, this is in Neltharion's Lair dungeon, I'll meet you on the other side. When we are in Neltharion's Lair and when he does show back up at the end, it's, I must leave you, champion. It's extremely shady and I think there, if there is a small raid in High Mountain related to Neltharion, it will tie to that fact. And it says, also, there are similar maps, breadcrumbs in the Hunter Hall, in fact, the same exact map is on the south wall, but it's upside down. Um, yes. I mean, I always took Ebonhorn's statement to be this, this idea of him leaving us. Because he's a dragon, and we know he's a dragon. But remember, Dargrul doesn't know he's a dragon. Is it Dargrul? The stone guy who's on our side. Um, no. It's something else. I can't remember everyone's name. Sorry. But the guy who accompanies us doesn't know that Ebonhorn is a dragon. That's revealed to us and Mela. I just think he can't be asked tramping through the dungeon. And he can fly. <laughs> so he goes, I'm going to leave you now. I'll find my own way as if there's some secret path. Waits for them all to go. Turns into his turns into a dragon. Off. Gone. Um, now, the leaving us suddenly at the end, fair enough. But he doesn't really leave us, does he? He sort of stays there. Um, so, hmm. There isn't necessarily anything fishy. That being said, if there were indeed uh, like a mini raid that's associated with it, then yes, you would think Ebonhorn would be involved in it again. And also, uh, it may well be that, as you say, uh, his statements in Neltharion's Lair do have added significance as a result. Um, so next one was... I can't remember what it was to do with now, but I just thought this comment here because... We now know from the audio drama, if we didn't know before, it is possible that this has been stated elsewhere before and I've just forgotten it or never read it or whatever. Um, but certainly it was made clear in the audio drama. Uh, but someone says here, Deathwing was corrupted by the old gods, so it could tie in there. And the dread, this, is the, this is the comment. The Dreadlords could have been like the Eredar before Sargeras and what if they, you know, so forget about the third comment. Uh, this we now know is true. The Nath regime are not, well, they are demons now, but they weren't. They were a race that were corrupted by Sargeras in the same way that the Eredar were. So, um, yeah, we know that now. We may have known before. It may have been the case before. I'm not going to swear that it wasn't and that this is a big reveal. Um, I may just have forgotten or, as I say, never read it in the first place. 
And then the, the final bit on this one, it says, uh, and what if they added scaling technologies to all dungeons and made them Mythic Plus? Um, I think there's such a thing as having too much variety. You know, it's one thing at the moment where we get a key each week, and it could be one, I can't even remember how many dungeons there are now. There's a good, a lot more dungeons than there's been in the last few expansions, aren't there? Uh, or, or are there? No, I don't think there are, but I think it just seems like it. Um, I think it's because they've been spacing them out throughout the uh, expansion, actually. It just seems like there's more than there are. But there's a decent number at any rate. No one's going to complain about the number of them. But if you suddenly like included all the previous ones as well, you know, you could get a key of like one of... God, how many dungeons must there be now? A hundred uh, dungeons in your keystone? That's going to be really annoying. Especially as the whole point of Mythic Plus... Sorry about that. Um, especially as with Mythic Plus, the whole point is you've got these affixes to make it harder. And as you go up the keystones, it just naturally gets harder anyway, even without the affixes. And you have to come up with strategies for ways of dealing with it. That's It's one thing with a relatively modest number of dungeons. When there's a whole host of them, all the different combinations of dungeons and affixes and all the rest of it would make it very difficult for anyone to become an expert in a particular dungeon for the purposes of Mythic Plus. And, you know, and some people might like that, uh, but I don't think I would. I think I like it that it's possible for you to come up with a sensible strategy and to, to act it out. Uh, and, and that is not helped by suddenly having a hundred possible dungeons to say nothing of all the different combinations of affixes you can get as well. Um, and then the final comment says, do you think invasion points, this is for Argus, could have had a scenario story element put in, uh, as in follow an army of the light member or Illidari to actively hunt the end boss, kill trash, complete objectives for each invasion point, instead of the pop in and out five minute break we get from Argus. Personally, no, <laughs> quite like it. Um, there are two different models of invasion. I suppose there's been three different models of invasions that we've had because there was the pre-expansion invasions at the end of WAD. But in terms of in Legion itself, there's two models of invasion. I'm not saying these are the only two models you can have. I mean, apart from the fact I've just said there were three altogether anyway. So on the Broken Isles, it is the model that you're talking about, isn't it? Because the idea is these invasions pop up on a zone. We complete four objectives, random whichever objectives we want, click four of them. Then we go to an NPC. And then a storyline does indeed ensue, uh, which culminates in a scenario where you group up with two other people, you go through party of three, and you complete that scenario. I don't like that. <laughs> that, uh, that takes quite a while. Um, I can't be doing it. I, I would rather personally just pop in and out in five minutes and get it done. Uh, I view it as no different to a world quest that is takes a little bit longer and it's a bit more lucrative that's all so but you know um but what i would say is that yeah the, the style of invasion that is story driven and then as a scenario does exist obviously because they're not as frequent the invasions on the broken isles you you know there'll be some days where unless you're able to play all day you won't even see one so you might only see one or two a week you know i usually am only online and able to do them once or twice a week if I wanted to, which I don't. Um, but, you know, I think those invasions do exist. So I think it is nice to have both different types. But, yeah, for me on Argus, I mean, at this point in the expansion, I'm not, I don't hate world quests in the way that I hated dailies. Um, but I can do without spending more time on them than I need to, especially when I fit around my wow activities and this channel indeed and work around each other i don't need to be spending longer than i do on the content that you know is not that interested to me the content that's interested to me are the raids but yeah there you know, the will be people who think you know they like that style of invasion but it does exist i think on the broken hours but that's my personal opinion and there we go for this week. Uh, there's actually a few more comments than there usually are for this one. And as I say, there's going to be another special, which I'm going to be recording uh, this afternoon. 
but I may not bring it out until tomorrow because uh, it will be lower priority on the editing. I always have several videos to do on a Sunday. So it's very likely that I'll come out on Monday evening from my point of view or, or late afternoon, something like that. Um, so apologies to anyone who adds any comments on that maybe you'd think should feature in that next mailbox, but I'm recording it now, uh, even though it may not come out for another 24 hours. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to get actively disco uh, involved in discussions like this, there's my Tuesday talk, which is on Twitch, uh, 7 p.m. UK time. That usually lasts for a good couple of hours. Um, last week or, or this week, whatever you want to call it, it lasted for two and a half hours. I completely forgot the time on that one. So it did run for a little bit extra. Um, but you can get actively involved in that one. That's always a good bit of fun. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.